why is magic powerful for you? Well, I, I think that the, the, the I Have Nothing Up My Sleeve school, which I think for me was represented by Langham at the, at the Festival Theatre, is tiny, it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stage. You can do anything on it if you use your smiles, anything. As I've been able to prove, I've done 36, 35, 36 productions on it. And, and again and again, it's like the most marvelous canvas. You can, you can um, conjure things there. It depends on, on the, what the piece requires. I mean, for the first time on Amadeus, I took the center column away to my guilt, because that was Tanya's most precious thing, because that is the center of the theater. Take the center column away, and you go to Pacini March. Right. The center column there, you go left, you go right. So the audience gets a treat, they get a treat, they get a treat. You don't just play for the king, you know. Right. Uh, uh, but the magic of it is, for me, you segue that to the ballet. And those creatures, I mean, in some cases, they work a great deal harder than actors, physically, certainly. But, um, but to see someone like Fontaine, who I dressed twice, um, to see what she could do from the person you saw in the fitting room to the person she was on stage, there's some strange alchemy went on. And even when she was in her mid-fifties, she could still convince you she was Juliet, she was, uh, or, or, or in The Merry Widow. Um, the, 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 the artifice, again, of storytelling, it heightened and heightened and heightened. And the reason why I loved this was to do London Assurance was that having seen Brian, having worked with him before many times in different sorts of plays, having seen him do this, I thought, golly, this might be fun. And in doing the, the magic, it can be fun. If it isn't, I don't want to do it. Describe magic. Magic, um, different kinds. Butch Blake, Darling Old Butch, Festival Theatre, Bare Stage, Before the Days of Sound People and the Soundscape, Henry IV Part II, uh, Butch comes from under the balcony, a little brown frock and an apple, sits on a stool downstage and oh, does this. And you hear tss, 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 little blue light, night time, and from under the balcony you just hear dogs barking, plates clattering in the pub, a little bit of song, a little bit of laughter, a little bit of noise, laughter. It was a beautifully orchestrated piece of, of atmosphere done by real live actors in different parts of the theatre backstage, all cued beautifully. And you heard all this happening. And then, and then when Butch, listening to all this, takes a deep breath and said, you listen to all this wonderful pub sound and the, and the line is, and now, and that lovely Welsh voice said, and now comes in the sweet of the night. Instant Warwickshire, instant Warwickshire. That's one kind of magic. Nestle Sleeping Beauty, Covent Garden. The first, the first appearance of Aurora. Again, a designer who cared about the, what the action needed. You're the audience, um, the Covent Garden, Row columns, archway, row columns, court. The first, the music, blah, 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 bum, entrance. And you see through the columns a flash of pink, a flash of pink, a flash of pink, the uh, arabesque. The first thing you see of Fontaine is this fantastic arabesque. <laughs> Gone. Until she comes back to make her entrance as Aurora. And that heart stopping magic, because it, it was a wonderful way of presenting her as a princess. 16th birthday and also another kind of another kind of magic is um, Sutherland I I did um, Joan Sutherland yeah I did her <coughs> debut at Glyndebourne and also her debut at the Met the Norma and uh, <laughs> it was um, in the doing of it it was th th what was on st the magic was on stage was very different to the work that got there because she's a very practical lady very practical Oh, Desi, do you think it's easy? I'd like a rock. If I can have a rock, I can <coughs> do this too. Before I go on. <laughs> Fine, I can do that for you. Anyway. But when she got on stage, the voice, with she and Marilyn Horn together, that first duet, Mira or Norma, I mean, it didn't matter what those two broads were standing in front of or wearing, because the voice just transported you. 
No, that's the mandarin. So, well, different kinds of mandarin. 